Yeah. A lot of folks won't even come out here, man, cause nigga bit the hill out here, bit the hill, be out here terrorizing the nigga and shit like Damn. that. Oh God, that's the shit. Victor Hill originally started his law enforcement career in 1983 with the Charleston Police Department in Charleston, South Carolina. Standing five feet tall with a pencil-thin mustache, in 1990, he was fired because he ran a stop sign in his police cruiser. In 1991, Hill moved to Georgia and could only find a job as a mall cop before being hired as a patrolman in Clayton County, Georgia, in 1992. In 2002, his boss eventually transferred him from the homicide unit to a desk job at the pawn shop unit, which he felt was beneath him. Fed up, Hill quit his police job in dramatic fashion. He drove his county car to the department, parked in the chief's reserved parking spot, tossed his gun and badge into the trunk, dropped a resignation letter in the front seat, and left. That same year, Hill ran for state representative and won in a runoff. Two years later, he was ready to run for sheriff of Clayton County. To become a sheriff in Georgia, there are really only two requirements, don't have a criminal record, and win the most votes. Newly elected sheriffs must attend four weeks of training before they're sworn in, but beyond that, a sheriff can take office without ever having to investigate a murder, tackle a suspect, or write a speeding ticket. In 2005, Hill became Clayton County's first black sheriff. On his first day as sheriff, Hill fired 27 employees, including five of the highest-ranking officers. Deputies summoned the employees to the jail at about 10 a.m. and stripped them of their guns and badges. Hill ordered snipers on the roof of the jail, just in case employees who were fired wanted to come back and retaliate against him. Because they were no longer allowed to use their county cars, some former deputies were driven home in vans normally used to transport prisoners. Within 37 days of his first day as sheriff, he would turn the jail into a military-like boot camp, which he would call the Hilton. Hill would equip a helicopter, along with a tank and other former military equipment. In 2006, Hill asked to have his office's budget expanded so he could purchase sniper rifles, assault rifles, and night vision goggles. At the time, the sheriff told the Clayton News Daily he loved technology and would take any available equipment to become a paramilitary organization. Hill said, if I had the money, I'd put a satellite in the sky to read the license plates off of cars. The 27 deputies who were fired on Hill's first day sued Hill for wrongful termination. They won their jobs back and settled for $7 million, which was paid by the city of Clayton County. Hill was also under investigation for alleged credit abuse. Commissioners alleged that Hill used a county credit card to pay for a trip to Las Vegas. Hill said he was attending a conference. However, the county commission chairman said he did not authorize the trip. Hill filed for bankruptcy in 2008 after several lawsuits were filed against him, including false arrests where he was forced to pay $475,000 in damages. He also sold his four-bedroom, three-bathroom home for $295,000. That same year, he lost his re-election for sheriff and had no choice but to find a part-time job as a car salesman in Union City, Georgia. In January 2012, he ran again for sheriff while also being indicted on a 37-count racketeering indictment for his role in theft by taking, influencing a witness, and making a false statement. Also being accused of using thousands of dollars from his 2008 re-election campaign and using his government car and county credit card to go on vacations. In August of that year, he would become sheriff once again, winning in a runoff, and in November, all charges of his racketeering trial would be dismissed. But in May 2015, roughly around 5 p.m., Hill was with a female friend who was a real estate agent. They were in a model home located in Gwinnett County, when Hill was showing her police tactics, and he accidentally shot her in the abdomen. 
Hill quickly called 911 but refused to cooperate when officers arrived at the scene. The female friend was left in critical condition, and Hill was charged with reckless conduct, a misdemeanor, and booked into the Gwinnett County Jail. Hill was released from jail after posting a $2,950 bond. Hill reiterated that the shooting was an accident. His female friend would eventually undergo numerous surgeries and other procedures. She lost a kidney, spleen, and part of her large intestine. She would also reiterate that Hill was innocent and he was showing her police tactics. Sheriff Victor Hill entered the plea under the state's first offender statute and was ordered to serve 12 months on probation and pay a $1,000 fine. The sentence did not affect his status as sheriff, but he was only required to undergo various weapons trainings. Despite the city being outraged for spending $11 million settling lawsuits against Hill, he was also praised for his outstanding work lowering the crime rate. He would even go as far as randomly pulling people over and giving them $100. He would be elected once again for his third term as sheriff. But anyone that tried to object or go against Victor Hill, he would definitely go above and beyond to get them out of the way. Like when an officer was caught watching a football game on his work computer. Hill terminated him not only because he was caught, but because the officer did not agree with Hill that chaplains should become deputies. And on that same day, he sent an email to his co-workers calling Hill an evil man, and the next day Hill arrested him for computer trespassing. Another example was in 2018, Deputy Robert Hawks, who had previously worked for Hill, was a rival and was not a fan of him. So he announced that he would be running against Victor Hill in the next 2020 elections. So Victor Hill decided to place Hawks under investigation for an incident that happened a year earlier when Deputy Hawks allegedly lied during an internal affairs investigation into the whereabouts of two stolen firearms that belonged to the sheriff's office. A year earlier, in October 2017, Deputy Robert Hawks was required to turn in a weapon, a Glock 42, in order to have it replaced with a Glock 43. According to the sheriff's office, Hawks turned in a Glock 42 he had purchased from a pawn shop. The Clayton County Sheriff's Office noted that the serial number on the weapon Hawks had turned in did not match the weapon issued to Hawks and that it was not one in the Sheriff's Office inventory. When asked about it, Hawks said he sold a Glock 42 to an Atlanta police officer and must have mistakenly sold the officer the weapon that belonged to the Sheriff's Office instead. The inventory specialist contacted Hawks several times in November to see if he had obtained the weapon back from the Atlanta officer and received only excuses from Hawks. After repeated attempts to have Hawks find the weapon, the inventory specialist notified his chain of command. Hawks claimed that he accidentally sold the Glock 42 to an Atlanta police officer he identified as Deshaun Burns in July 2015. Hawks says he made several attempts to contact Burns, but found he had moved out of state. Further investigation found that no Atlanta officer by that name existed and that Hawks had fabricated the identity of Deshaun Burns. The report had been turned in as an official police report with false information. The whole time Hawks was trying to cover for his son who had stolen his police firearm and sold it to a pawn shop for some quick money. Hawks was placed on administrative leave without pay and subsequently resigned to avoid termination. Just before the sheriff's office sought to terminate Hawks, a neighboring county issued a warrant for Hawks's son, but two Clayton County Sheriff's Office lieutenants failed to make proper notification of the warrant and one tipped Hawks off about the warrant. When Victor Hill found out about it, he demoted one lieutenant to sergeant and terminated the other. Hawks' wife, Gary and Hawks, began emailing Sheriff Victor Hill and harassed him about love and fear. Hill asked her to stop and to refrain from contacting him. She continued to email the sheriff. After he asked her to stop a third time, Hill issued a warrant for her arrest and she was arrested for harassment, all while live-streamed on Facebook. Hey, Facebook. Now they're locking my wife up because I announced that I was running for sheriff. They locking her up for harassing communications. She sent the email saying, blessings and love. Something is wrong with Victor Hill. This is not right. It's wrong. This is wrong because I said where there is love, fear cannot exist. She bonded out for $1,500. A week later, Robert Hawks was arrested and charged with filing false documents in violation of his oath of office, and his bond was set at $26,000. In November of 2019, two off-duty Clayton County deputies, a captain and a sergeant, were working security without approval at a club venue when a fight broke out from the inside, and people rushed out and asked the two deputies to help break it up. However, 
They refused, and then shots rang out, causing both deputies to run away in fear. One person was killed after being shot in the chest. When Victor Hill found out about the two officers' cowardice, he fired both of them and demoted a lieutenant down two ranks to deputy because he arrived on the scene and was made aware of their cowardly behavior, but failed to notify the command staff. The shooter was captured 48 hours later and was eventually given a 20-year sentence. The next year, Hill would be re-elected for his fourth term as sheriff, and the following year, his career would take a drastic turn when he was indicted on federal charges for violating the civil rights of six pretrial detainees at the jail by ordering the detainees to be strapped into restraint chairs for hours without legal justification. Hill would restrain these inmates in restraint chairs ranging from three to seven hours, even threatening to keep them restrained for 16 hours if he ever saw them again. Inmates were put in restraint chairs and held there for hours. And I don't mean like two, three hours. I mean 10 plus hours. Another inmate was said to have been held in a restraint chair for so long that he had to urinate on himself and then actually even faked a stroke so that he could be taken to the infirmary or to the hospital to receive actual help because he was held there for guess how many hours? 17. 17 hours without using the bathroom, without having any food, without having any water. That's what they were held there for. And you may be asking, well, obviously they had to have been held there for a reason. No. So in the case of the 17-year-old victim, he was arrested that day um, for some separate charges. When he was arrested, he was handcuffed, put into the back of the sheriff's car. The arresting officer then took a picture of him and sent it to Sheriff Victor Hill. Sheriff Victor Hill then responded, age. The arresting officer said 17, and he responded with one word, chair. So this poor boy hadn't even been in the Clayton County jails for more than even a few minutes. He was processed and put directly in the restraint chair, which he was then held there for 10 hours. And for those of you who don't know, this is what a restraint chair looks like. So as you can see above, this is what restraint chairs look like. They do vary per jail, but some of them um, fully cover their face and cut off their neck. Some of them don't. It's no telling which one they were actually put in. I don't have that direct information, but this is the gist. Many of the inmates claimed that they would use the bathroom on themselves three times in a row, and the straps would be so tight on their wrists that they would begin to bleed. One detainee said he still has visible scars on his wrists three years later. I'm going to ask you a third time. Oh, you ain't going to ask me, Jack. You're going to sit in this chair. Am I entitled to a free and speedy trial? You ain't entitled to sit in this chair, and you're entitled to get the hell out of my county and don't come back. That's what you're entitled to. The governor suspended Hill as sheriff, and Victor Hill's godson became the temporary sheriff of Clayton County. Hill hired Levon Allen in 2013. Allen voluntarily resigned from his job as a DeKalb County jail officer, following his arrest on domestic violence charges for striking his wife and after filing for bankruptcy twice. Levon Allen faced criticism for his shocking fast-tracked promotions by his godfather, Victor Hill. For example, records show that Allen went from deputy sheriff to the number two man in the department, chief deputy, in three and a half years. Allen went from sergeant to lieutenant in five months and captain to major in one month. The rapid fire promotions also came with huge salary increases. Allen went from a $43,000 salary as a deputy sheriff in 2019 to a $143,000 salary as chief deputy three and a half years later. While Hill was suspended and getting ready for his upcoming trial, he became disgusted with how quickly the crime rate in his county went up and how dangerous his jail had become. The residents in Clayton County were excited that Victor Hill was suspended while others were sad because of the violent crime spike. Prior to his suspension, Hill had brought the murder rate down by 24%, but after his suspension, it shot up to over 70%. Hill was suspended in June 2021, and from June to December, there were 31 homicides and 828 aggravated assaults. On October 26, 2022, 
Victor Hill was found guilty and sentenced to 18 months in federal prison, along with six years of supervised release. After sentencing, Hill was approved to receive his retirement and pension of $8,159 a month, including an additional $2,300 for his 14 years on the force, which equals him making $125,000 a year. On May 15, 2023, Hill posted a video on his Facebook showing him boarding a private jet on his way to serve his 18-month prison sentence at a low-level federal prison camp in Arkansas, titled with the caption, Strength and Honor. His release date was November 2024, but he was released early on April 11, 2024. Since Hill has been released, he has appealed his conviction in order to possibly run for sheriff for a fifth term.